We are back to cap off the Zack Snyder Justice League Man of Steel Batman v Superman trilogy. This is his movie. It says so in the movie. It says a Zack Snyder film or movie. Anyway, this is this is a is going to be a real dramatic finale to this <laughs> trilogy. It's the real oh my god, it's such a Wait, I'm looking at the wrong notes. I'm looking at Batman v Superman. This <laughs> this one's a real wet fart, this movie. I'll be honest with you. Oh, absolutely. And look, the reason we're here is because we run polls on Patreon to be like, what do people want to see? And there was high demand for this trilogy. So we appreciate that. If you want to yep. contribute, you can. It's linked below. And of course, if you could leave a like, that would be great. And I just want to mention, we're not really going to get into the specifics of the reshoots and the multiple versions of this movie that could have been. We've got videos on that on the channel, That's which we'll exactly link below right. if you we, do want to check it out. We, want to, we don't want to focus on what this movie isn't. Yeah. We want to focus on just... The magic of the silver screen. What That's we right. saw when we ended that cinema and we're like, is this a PS3 cutscene? What's <laughs> <Yeah>. happening? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. And I just want to say also, I am going to say some good things about this movie, but I want people to bear in mind that it is infinitely worse than the two that come before this I agree. in almost every way. I feel yeah. like that's going to be skewed somewhat. Yes. So I just, I need to say that. But I also feel like that that isn't a necessarily a more controversial opinion. I just meant people might be upset that I'm saying anything good about this movie. Oh, that's where I'm, that's where I'm <laughs> coming see. at this from. Yeah. I understand. Okay, we're on the yeah. same page now. It's interesting though with this movie because things were looking good because there was a bit of an uptick in the DC universe in general. I know Batman v Superman has its fans, but it didn't perform super well. It didn't right. hit a billion dollars. I'm not saying it's a flop. Please don't misconstrue <laughs> that. It, but it didn't perform as well as it was as it should have. Wonder Woman, though, came out and crushed it. Yeah, right. Universally beloved. And yes, I know some people didn't like it. I, I know. <laughs> I'm talking in generalities. James, you're not allowed to speak in generalities <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. Everything you say <laughs> must contain the sum total of all human knowledge. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. But the thing is, this is obviously a response to Batman v Superman because it started filming straight away. Mm -hmm. That movie came out, then they went straight into this. And the reason it was changed, I feel, is purely financial. If Batman v Superman had have made a billion, two billion dollars. Ten they, billion dollars? Yeah, ten. A hundred billion dollars. hundred billion dollars. Other numbers. Infinity dollars. But my point is, the Transformers movies, for example, they didn't change the formula, even though they're not good, right. generally speaking, because they made money. And that's why this movie was changed to this. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. it's, it's purely financial. Yeah. I'm not saying that's right. It's just the reality of <laughs> movie it. Movie yeah. studios are just machines. If a thing keeps <laughs> working, they'll keep making it until it doesn't work anymore. Exactly. So the intro to this, the, uh, <laughs> the phone footage, straight away you're like, something is wrong with this movie. You do, but I, I think that's an interesting way to start a movie. Like, I think... Fresh, I just meant visually. No, exactly. But I mean, <laughs> I mean conceptually fresh and hip yes. and interesting. But visually, yes, it's very weird. The whole thing's very weird. <laughs> Superman seems visibly annoyed that some small children who idolise him are, are daring to speak to him. That might be the moustache lip situation. I think it's that. In re-watching it, I'm like, mm. okay, he's trying to come across as... Jovial. As and jovial and friendly and, and, and yeah. trying to, in, you know, uh, inspire these little kids. But the moustache... Sorry, the lack of moustache... Yeah. The upper lip that you could park a plane on yeah. uh, is, is really contributing to him looking kind of annoyed. Look, we know that everybody knows about Mustache Gate at this point in time, mm. but this will become a relic of the internet. So who knows what people are going to remember. Do you want to quickly explain the Mustache situation? Oh, absolutely. Uh, look, to the best of my knowledge, the initial shoot of Justice League was complete mm -hmm. and Henry Cavill, Superman, he moved on to filming another movie, which was Mission Impossible Fallout, yes. for which he grew a spectacular mustache. Hmm. But then it was requested that he come back and reshoot most of Justice League. Yeah. So Warner Brothers asked the producers of Mission Impossible if he could shave his mustache for the purpose of the reshoots. And they said, absolutely not. And they said, what if he shaves it and we spend more money than he's ever been spent on a very realistic fake mustache for your production of Mission Impossible? They said, absolutely not. Have it instead what you do is he keeps his moustache, he films as Superman with a moustache, yes. and you remove it digitally. And they were like, yep, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> the opening scene of Justice League is what could happen, and I guess. And various scenes throughout. It's interesting because people have done their own at-home versions of this uh -huh. and have had better results. So it's interesting that this is the this is it somehow. Well, yeah, and again, and like, it was, it's such an expensive movie. The budget on this yes. is insane. $300 million? Something like Something that, Something like yeah. That. That. I mean, they fudge the numbers, because, <laughs> but this is a... This was a massive bomb. Infinity dollars? No, Mason, much In less. Oh, okay, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. But yeah, but again, like I feel it's important to note when you criticise visual effects in movies, when it's a major motion picture, they, br they bring in the best of the best to do this sort of stuff. The issue is often time and money. Yeah. If you only give them the briefest amount of time to, to fix this sort of stuff, you get what you get in the time allotted. 
And I think that's what they got here. Totally. I think they could have fixed this scene, and I've mentioned this before, if they just didn't show Superman's face. Mm -hmm. It's a kid holding a camera, so they're just holding it askew and you don't see it. Yeah, right. I think that would have fixed the entire scene. Or they've accidentally left a Snapchat filter on. <laughs> yeah. And he's got a he's got a cartoon mustache. <laughs> that, and then we wouldn't even That know. is a better idea. A monocle keeps <laughs> yeah, appearing. That's right, you know? yeah. Another massive problem with this film is... It's, it looks terrible. The yeah, colour oh yeah. grading, it's like a horrible cartoon nightmare. Almost everything in the, this movie looks like a video game cutscene. Yeah. But also, the visual effects in the Steppenwolf versus the Amazon scene are so jarring, it looks like it's going to turn into a Kit Kat ad. <laughs> like, you know how sometimes you'll be watching a... Maybe you're at the movies, you're watching a scene that looks like an epic. It's an yeah. epic battle for the ages, and they're all charging with their horses yeah. and their spears. And then somebody's like, oh, I could do with a break. Let's have a Kit Kat. It's Mr. T with the Snickers or something. Exactly, right? It looks like that level of dissonance between the yeah. live action actors and the background visual effects where you go, this isn't movie grade visual effects. Yeah. This is advertisement grade. That's exactly that's right. That's what this movie looks like. I think a large part of that though is the colour grading and they brighten everything up. It makes everything look worse and you're not supposed to see the things that are happening in this movie like that. Mm -hmm. And I think the opening scene on the rooftop with Batman is a perfect example. Because it's as bright as day, yes. practically. It looks like a cartoon. And that Ben Affleck Batman suit, which I love, does not hold up under no. that kind of lighting and scrutiny. Mm. It looks fake and rubbery in a way that it didn't in the previous movie. I agree. I want to, At that scene, yeah. I want a special shout out to Holt McCallany. I love him. From the movie Mindhunter, who plays the burglar. The in television that serial That's Mindhunter. exactly right. He's a comedic foil. He's just a big exposition machine. Mm. At one point, he says, of the, uh, the, the parademon we see, he says, from space, from space. like an alien army. The alien army? <laughs> and I feel like he should have continued... You know, like in one of Joss Whedon's previous superhero movies? <laughs> like, you know, one of the ones that was really well-liked? He's got a big sack of loot. <laughs> it feels just so good to steal this bag of miscellaneous valuables from a tenement building in a cartoon city, you know? Yeah, yeah it's, it's horrible. And that also, there's a few other things that I don't like about that scene. In particular, Bruce Wayne is just talking to Alfred openly. He's like, yeah. Alfred, are you seeing this? And the guy's standing right there. Yeah. There's a number of moments in this film where characters are outed for their real identities. When Batman is talking to Aquaman and he's like, hey, don't count on a Batman. What, you're Bruce Wayne and you dress like a bat? <laughs> There's a moment also where Clark Kent comes back and Lois Lane is like, Clark! Clark! <laughs> and there's just cops standing around. Right, uh -huh. oh, but I guess... Do identities even mean anything in these movies? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's in the zeitgeist, James. People are just giving up their identities. This is we're in a post Iron Man two thousand and eight world, where superheroes are just like, what are you going to do? I'm rich and I have a lot of guns. What are you going to do? Come to my house? I'll shoot you. But in these movies, we are supposed to assume that people don't know who these people yeah, are. Yeah, I know. That's the difference here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, I love the opening credits. Uh, in particular, there's three moments I want to point out. Mm -hmm. There's a newspaper article that says super germ could end humanity. There's white supremacists running amok and people miss Superman. And one of those three things to me doesn't ring true to the modern day. <laughs> Which one do you think it is, Mason? Mm, I think it's probably the bloody white supremacists getting arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be this kind of dramatic, I guess almost Watchmen-esque opening did sequence. feel that way, yeah. 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 We, we learn about the state of the world through this you know, continuously panning exploration of the environment kind of thing. We've got the, we got the homeless man saying with this little... Little sign that says, I tried. That's right. People think that's actually related to Joss Whedon did oh, it on that's, purpose. That's but his admission that he tried to make this a good movie. Well, I think people blame a lot of this on Joss Whedon. When what really happened is Warner Brothers probably went to him and went, do you want $10 million to just do these reshoots? But you have to kind of do it exactly like this because it doesn't feel like any kind of director's vision. There's Whedon-esque elements in it and mm. we'll get to them. Yes. But I don't think you can blame any of this on one particular person, right? No, I don't think so either. Both credited directors, you know, have produced good work in the past. Yeah. And this this doesn't really feel like either of them. It just feels like, uh, yeah, a series of notes from, from a movie yeah, studio. No, exactly, no. Yeah. yeah. I think the Wonder Woman opening scene with the terrorist stuff is fine. Though there is that moment when the bullet is going to hit her, but it's clearly not going to hit her when she ducks out of the way. <laughs> Well, but better be safe than sorry. That's how she survived however long she's been alive. Hundred of years. Hundred of years. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. I love the moment uh, where Bruce Wayne's like, I gotta, I gotta go find Aquaman. I gotta get the team together. And he takes so long to do so, because he's on horseback, presumably, that he grows a full beard. <laughs> but he's got eight different planes, maybe, <laughs> just, just yeah. that we know about. It's Ben Affleck's hair and face and wig in this is so distracting. Yes. Because it's, it's in scenes because it goes shot for shot yeah, and, yeah, it, right. and it it's changes. And I know that he did have some personal problems in between these shoots and he's kind of a bit bloated from alcoholism. Look, I don't really want to get into it. I'm not trying to kick him 
but it's just very noticeable and the and the hairline of the wig shifts dramatically. It's yeah. it's so visually jarring. It's, I know you have I know you're a very big wig connoisseur. So. Yeah. Also, I love that this version of Aquaman just he litters in the ocean and he he's just like, throws a b- bottle of whiskey in the ocean. He's yeah. like, I don't even care about global warming. I love it, in fact. <laughs> Because he's that kind of guy. He's, he's not a snowflake, is he? He's That's a cool, true. rad dude. There should have been a scene later in, in Aquaman, the movie, when the Atlanteans are like, we're, we're throwing all this litter back onto the surface world. And he's like tugging at his collar like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Maybe he didn't, he didn't feel as connected to his heritage then. Yeah. So. I think he does have some good moments in it. And yeah. even more so in his own movie. That bubble moment is weird where they step into the air bubble together. They didn't quite know how to to say, how do we speak underwater? I think it's not that. You think so? Re- upon re-watching this, I think it's because it's a reshoot. Yes. And that way you can just do it against a green screen and you don't have to CGI the hair all floating about. That's also That would have been yeah. super expensive. Because yeah, yeah. that whole movie, the Aquaman movie, all the underwater stuff... They comp out all the hair and re-put it back oh, yeah, in. Right. Uh-huh. You don't have to do any of that. You can just have yeah. them standing in a bubble. Yeah. <sighs> Barry Allen. Yes. I've just written, learn to run, idiot. It's That's like your whole the, deal. It's the only thing you do. Yeah, right? And there's also that moment, and I know we've talked to this to death, but when Batman turns up and is like, come and join my team. Do you like Especially. being on a team? And he's like, I love being on teams. And he's like, I don't know what your abilities are. Catch this batarang. You don't know what's going to happen it here. It might be that he has incredible quantum teleportation abilities that are only interrupted by, like, solid stainless steel. <laughs> That'll definitely kill him. That's his one weakness, kryptonite style. Yeah, just not good. Look, I've written here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, I, uh, I've written Barry Allen walks this line between enthusiastic and annoying, and then he steps right over it. <laughs> yeah. Like, there was, there's some moments, especially in that scene where he's first meeting Batman, where I'm like... Oh, okay, I get it. You know, he needs, yeah. he needs friends or, you know, he's, uh, what are you doing in my house or whatever? But then he's like, brunch. brunch. What's the deal with brunch? I think, I think that's the Joss Whedon kind of reshoot yeah. dialogue. Because yeah. there's that. There's the classic Joss Whedon falling on some boobs. Mm-hmm, yep. Great gag. Uh-huh. There's a moment where Superman's like, I thought you didn't like me. And Batman's like, well, uh, can I, well I kind of like uh, you. Uh, it's just, mm, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think Victor Stone is good in this and very hard done by. I think he puts in a very good performance for the 40 seconds he's in this movie, really. It's true. Yeah. There's also an unfinished plot point, and I know it's in the other version, where Steinberg's like, am I a bad guy or not? And Aquaman's like, maybe this guy's a bad guy. He's not. (laughs) <laughs> he's, he's just not. Yeah, that would have taken up too much time. We need to look yeah. at another thing. We need to insert an Eastern European family who are being pestered by alien space bugs. So there's no time for character development, all right? Why put in that family? And I sort of get it because it's like, these are some people on the ground that you, the audience, can relate to. Yes. But you know who I want to relate to and feel empathy for? Mm-hmm. The fucking main people in these movies, the Justice League. Mm-hmm. That's who I'm here for. Oh, yeah. They don't even talk. It's... I don't, I don't know. It's just bizarre to me. What a yeah. weird addition. You mentioned this before, but the uh, the boom tube effect. It's so bad for one, mm-hmm. and it doesn't really boom. It goes... Oh, it's a, a pachoo tube. Yeah. It's a weird kind of beehive-esque pattern on it, sort of, mm. and it's just a big blue laser. And th- Well, I had some... <laughs> They had some uh, 3D models of <laughs> big some... blue lasers lying around. Yeah, Yeah, and look, to get back to the Themyscira escape yes. uh, where they try to get rid of the box, I actually don't mind that sequence, the idea that they're trying to get it away from him. It looks bad. But... Look, uh, look, side note, every scene with Steppenwolf, I've just written here in my notes, Steppenwolf looks so bad. He looks so bad. Tr- atrocious. And it's, of course, because they changed the look of the character. Mm. A lot of that was probably supposed to be dark side, including the flashback, which, by the way, really great. Flashback's good. Don't tease a Green Lantern in Act <laughs> 1 and then not pay it off yeah. later. Like, I mean, it's a bit vague, but I feel confident in saying when I saw this at the cinemas, I'm like, well, they're all in a lot of trouble, but when Green Lantern shows up, oh, they're laying the groundwork. One of these side characters must be... Maybe it's the man. Maybe it's the Russian man in the house. Maybe he's going to be Green Lantern. Maybe Martian Manhunter is also a Green Lantern. Right? Yeah. Yes. He's holding all the cards. But the idea behind how they're trying to keep these boxes away from Steppenwolf, they're so bad at it. For one on Themyscira, where are you taking it? One person has ever left. Are you going to get it off the island? Have you got another room made of rocks you can put it in that you can easily smash through? Not what are just you doing? a room of rocks. A room of rocks and then a bunch of Amazons with regular bows and arrows <laughs> yeah, surrounding right. it. Yes. What do you think is going to come out of that? <laughs> 
like a deer? Yeah, you I think get... a deer's going to come out of the mother box? You can shoot it, get some venison? I love it how Martha Kent is losing her house. And it's hilarious to me that Bruce Wayne didn't step in to pay for the house earlier. Mm, like he's right. letting this happen, which is odd because he paid for the funeral of Clark Kent. Yes. But then I thought about it and I realised that funeral probably wasn't very expensive anyway. It's like a cheap wooden box, some finger <laughs> food and a hole in the ground. That was maybe five grand at the most. That's, maybe, that's probably true, <laughs> so yeah. So I think for that he was like, yeah, no problem. Right, right, right. I'm happy to show. A whole house? Mm, I don't know. Where's my profit margin there, you yeah. know? I mean, buying the bank, that's his profit margin. So I think he, he figured out a way to do it that would also benefit him. Exactly. <laughs> I'd imagine, yeah. Also, you've got to re remember that, it, you know, it, at Clark's funeral, he obviously had to buy him two sets of clothes, the suit he was wearing, and then the, tra the ruined track pants he was wearing underneath. <laughs> yes, that's right, yeah. Would you want to talk about that, his return? Well, I, I guess so, yeah. You, you touch the box, a lightning I, box, you touch, and he yeah. comes back. I don't mind that fight sequence. It looks bad because it's all been recolor graded. Yeah. But they're all coming at him, and he's kind of... Batting them aside, it's all right. It looks pretty good, yeah. I'm down on everything that came before that, I think. Yeah. One, Cyborg and Flash decide they have to dig up Clark <laughs> in real time at regular speed. Yeah. There's a clock ticking, guys. Come on. Flash, you you dig him up super speed. Cyborg, you can say a prayer. Yeah. And it's all worked out. But I like in that sequence where the Aquaman's like, oh yeah, we say Aquaman in Australia, not Aquaman. Just, I, we'll get the comments. I, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things I feel like I need to mention. But he's immediately like, this is very wrong and upsetting. Like he's yeah. like all his vital sides are just off the charts at this point. Also, what's your backup plan if this doesn't work? <laughs> because statistically speaking, it's never worked. No one's ever brought anyone back from the dead. Uh, so pretty slim chance. Even but if there's you... even a one percent chance well, that they're in the slightest yeah. possible yeah. absolute certainty, right. <laughs> well, they twist it, Mason. They did a little bit, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. That's fun. yeah Batman's one eighty odd Superman. It's insane. Right? He's clearly gone mad between movies. Mm. I do like that moment, though, genuinely, where he baits Wonder Woman into shoving him. I've written here, Batman's so mean, <laughs> and I don't like it. <laughs> He's so mean to everybody. He's like your dead boyfriend. You you liked him, but then he crashed into a thing and died, didn't he? <laughs> Sucks to be you. Oh, being hit. That's rude. And then it cuts to the flash, and he goes, you know, if she kills you, we're all, we're all going we're all, we're gonna to cover for her. Great, good, that's a great good, reshoot. That's a good it's really good. I liked it, yeah. Thanks. Uh, it's also cool that when Superman gets out, they all leave Batman in the Kryptonian ship. They fuck off and they, <laughs> get, they go to fight while he <laughs> pants his way across the grass to get well, there. Well, I mean, to be fair, that's how it was really going to go. <laughs> I've written here because Superman, obviously, he goes on this sort of rampage. We don't know if he's, he's good or bad at this point. I've written here, a funny bit would be if Superman's DNA mixed with the photo of Pa Kent that fell in the liquid... <laughs> and he woke up with an unstoppable drive to go fishing. I think that would have been good. <laughs> Clark, no! Not to the fishing hole! I like how Wonder Woman tricks Aquaman into his feelings. That's good. Oh, there yeah. we go. There's a thing that I like. Uh -huh. Why are Batman's vehicles so fucking weird in this? They're not good, are they? They're not. There's a weird crab. There's a yep. big flying whale. Yep. What? 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 He was trying to encourage Aquaman to be on the team. He's like, look what I got. I got a crab. I got a whale. Those are things you like, are they? <laughs> hey, huh? There's also that moment, of course, where... He assembles the team and he gets them together and he's like, get ready for my plan. You guys all wait here and I'm going to fly the ship in alone. You've assembled the team. That's what the team's for, <laughs> idiot. And then they come in and like, we're, we're changing your dumb plan. Because remember how you got us all together to do this thing do this together? Thing? Was it to be spectators? That's interesting. <laughs> uh, I, I also like how Superman shows up and beats up Steppenwolf. And I know it defeats the purpose of the rest of the Justice yes, League. Yes, it does. Because he does... All of their jobs. I've just written in my notes, and I don't know where it refers to, but it's towards the end. I've just written, God, this movie looks like shit. But not even the colour grading, the uh -huh. way it's framed. Yeah. Because at least Batman v Superman, all the shots are so purposeful. There's a, I have a note here that just says, even the door to the Batcave is CGI. <laughs> they arrive at the Batcave, they arrive on that... Elevator On thing. that elevator, and the door just CGI's open, and it looks terrible. Yeah. Just build a real door <laughs> and get some stage hands to pull the real door open. Yeah. Just do that. Absolutely. Or don't have a door on it. It's don't an elevator door, without yeah, a, a door. door. Now, we neglected to mention, and we certainly didn't forget, the score from the other movies. The Pretty Hans good. Zimmer combination. Mm, that's right. It's really great. That Man of Steel theme, all the BVS stuff. Yeah, the combination of Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL and how... They, were, they sort of left or were kicked off this project and replaced by Danny Elfman, who's good. He's good. Yep. But then they're just like, we're just putting in the Burton Batman theme. We're just going to put it in the Chris Reeve Superman theme. And I understand, like I get, I get it because people know those. Mm -hmm. 
But this score is nothing. I, I feel bad only bringing up the score in these movies now just to say, this isn't good, yep. when the previous two were so good. But hey, it's worth mentioning, I feel. I agree. Do the Flash and Cyborg have iconic... Uh, I mean, Wonder Woman's got... Ah, but does, do Flash and Cyborg have iconic themes? Yes. Oh, Cyborg's is... Compu pew 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 Computer games. Doodle idiom. That's his, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that's for The Flash as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just like, yeah, this is fine. Because The Flash probably likes computer games. We're, we're like he computer likes games. Rick and Morty. That's right. He's just like us. He's just like that's us. How, that's, that's my in into this movie. Because when he sees the bat signal, he reacts how I would react. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the signal. That's how we know to go. You are Batman, he says. <laughs> hey, bystander, that's Batman. Jim Gordon's in this. Yep. J.K. Simmons, love him. Great, but, great, I mean, great. he's in it for two minutes. Yeah. Clark returns to work, doesn't he? <laughs> yep. It's still still never resolved. There's not even a line. There's not even a line in there. What could it be? I don't know. I mean, it would be a convoluted line. It'd be something like, oh, hey, Clark, it's interesting. You are still alive, and the man we all presumed died was a different man who looked a lot like you, and we all went to his funeral. I mean, it's sad that he died. <laughs> and you didn't... You, you fell under some rocks or something. I don't know. I mean, that's what happened. Uh, where are you on post-credits? Oh, of course, the... Uh, look... <laughs> Look, James. <laughs> first of all, I, I like the first one. Oh, that's right. The rest between Superman Good. and the Flash. That's fun. And that's, you know, that's a nod to very much the, the classic Superman, the Flash rivalry. Who's the fastest? They're on always the racing. That's right. And obviously, it would be the Flash if he wasn't, if he wasn't such a goose. <laughs> yes, that's right. How many times does he fall in this movie? At least twice. Yeah. I wouldn't fall. Because if I could run that fast, all I would do is practice. Why I'm doesn't like... he eat his pizza at super speed? He's about to get in the. <laughs> Bruce Wayne's million dollar Mercedes. Why does he Why does he have to eat it slow? I'm not sure. It's a good question to ask though, isn't it? He's got a lot of good questions, that guy though. Specifically around brunch. Yeah. What? What is brunch? Is it food or is it lunch? Brunch it's not even a topical reference. Like brunch has been around for a very long time. Right. People understand brunch mm. at this point. It's He's probably pro been a brunch episode on Rick and Morty. <laughs> so there's that post credits. Mm -hmm. But then there's the second one. There's the second one where Lex it Luthor has made his escape from prison. And he's, and he's on a yacht, and he's become Gene Hackman, Lex Luthor. How'd he do it? I don't... I don't I Suits. Don't, it's the suit. Yeah, it's the suit. <laughs> the suit and the neckerchief, probably. It's strange that he jumped to that combination of clothing from, like, T-shirt <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, yeah. and suit jacket and jeans yeah, or right. whatever he was wearing. Uh -huh. But then it turns out that him and Deathstroke, and he's like, well, if these guys have a Justice League, we'll just have to form a league of our own. And everybody in the cinema went, like the baseball movie. <laughs> Because that's the only time anyone ever says that. Maybe that's the only reference we have to the phrase, a league of their own. Yeah. Anyway, it's trivia time. Trivia, 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 trivia. <laughs> Our famous segment of the show. I love it. So uh, the prison guard in this, mm -hmm. and also one of the cops you, we see, that's the original Jimmy Olsen from the Chris Reeve Superman movies. Oh. Oh, that is trivia. Also, if you haven't listened to the extended audio edition of this, all the other trivia from the IMDb, it's in there. We went through it step by step, mm -hmm. piece by piece. That's right. And yep. if we've not mentioned something that you wanted us to mention, that's also in the extended version, isn't it? That's absolutely right. It's yes. all there. We did not not mention it. We're all on the same page that's here. That's right. It's regarding the knowing of trivia about that's this right. movie. No, I'm not sure we're entirely on the same page because for me... This it's it's fine, like this movie on its okay. own. If you take it just on its own, it's like one of the okay Resident Evil movies. Okay, it's like Hobbs and Shaw. It's one of the dull X Men movies. Mm. I mean, when you look at it in comparison to what came before, it's a fucking nightmare. It makes no oh, sense. Absolutely, yes. But when you take it on its own, for me, yes, it's just a very very weird and average movie. I see what you're saying. I acknowledge what you say. I, I know I'm wrong. No, I know I mean, that. You're not wrong. It's just I feel like, again, you know, they had so many opportunities. They had so many chances to get this right. Yeah. And it should have been This way is better. the Justice League That's movie. Right, exactly. This crazy. Is, this is some of the most iconic comic book characters ever put on the page and ever put on the screen. And this is this is what you're giving us. Is that yeah. a Hobbs and Shaw? <laughs> an, an okay Resident <laughs> Evil movie. That's what we're getting with these guys. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I like... Superman, he's having a good time. See, that's I, th I feel. But it like, doesn't feel on yeah, it though. That's no. the problem with it. I'm like, it's good to see you, Superman. Mm -hmm. Who, who, who is this though? Right. <laughs> Anyways, are you looking forward to the Snyder Cut? Yeah, kind of now. Yeah. Yeah. Again, there's the, for me personally. At least it's a. Even if it's worse, which some people say, well, what if it's worse? <laughs> How for one? Right. But at least it's a vision. You know? Exactly. It's, it's, somebody made some choices. Yeah. They weren't forced into some choices mm. making this movie. Yeah. Look, for me, the only way is up yeah. for the Snyder Cut. 
or sideways. <laughs> definitely not down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Powerful words. Anyways, it's been Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week. That's right. If you've got do. suggestions, chuck it up on Patreon. We'd love to hear it. And of course, here's a hint towards next week's episode. Matthew McConaughey, Christian Bale. Oh my God, are you looking forward to that? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Anyway, subscribe if you want. This video's here all the time. Check it out. Uh, bell icons. Thank you for watching, contributing, commenting, having a good time with this movie like we did. Let us know any trivia we missed. I mean, I mean, we didn't. We didn't. It's in the extended. No, it's in the extended. But Let us know your opinion. But we share that opinion. That's right. We're, we're, we're with you. <laughs> the viewer and our listener. That's right. Thanks, guys. Uh, grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.